Hey, how you doing? I'm Stuart. This is the first in a series of videos where I'm going to read through games that I like. These are games that I use fairly regularly, games that I read quite a lot and games that inspire me. Um, I will be looking at games, new games as they come up and patrons can vote and suggest which ones they are. Uh, I'm starting with Can. Can is a, a game that I really, really like. It's a game that after playing Into the Odd, showed me how I, another way that I could run fantasy RPGs. I've played a lot of 5th edition and I, whilst I really like, I mean I still like 5th edition, it's got a certain style of play that connects to it that just doesn't gel with me anymore. Um, it's not how I like to play my fantasy RPGs, it just doesn't resonate with me. However, Can gave me the opportunity to really explore some of the stuff that I like. So I'm going to read through, I'm going to talk about the things I like, I'm going to talk about the ways in which I've used it, and when you see the series on starting an after school club, this is one of the games that I suggest. Alright, so, Can is an adventure game for one facilitator, the warden, and at least one other player. Players act as hardened adventurers, exploring the dark mysterious wood filled with strange folk, hidden treasure, and unspeakable monstrosities so it's filled with public domain art which is really important in today's age because you do not need to spend lots of money on art for your games so you see these are some of the inspirations and the thanks into the odd this uses a slightly modified version of the into the odd system uh, as well as nave from ben milton and um i don't actually know what weird north is um but i do know that dolman wood is was part of the inspiration for why this game exists. So these are the following design principles. Classless, characters' role and skills are not limited by a single class, instead equipment they, they carry and experiences define their speciality. Death, characters may be powerful, but they are also vulnerable to harm in many forms. Death is always around the corner, but it is never random or without warning. I think that's really good. I love when a game is lethal I don't think it's fair to just randomly drop a pile of rocks on their heads and kill them without warning the the GM in a game should be a facilitator facilitator of fun interest and intrigue not necessarily someone that just kills off players fiction first dice do not always reflect an obstacles difficulty or outcome instead Success or failure are arbitered by the Warden in a dialogue with the players and based on in-world elements. So the dice are not the be-all and end-all. They just help decide the narrative. Uh, characters change through in-world advancement, gaining new skills, abilities, and surviving dangerous events and overcoming obstacles. Neutrality, a Warden's role is to portray the rules, such situations, NPCs, and narrative clearly while acting as a neutral arbiter. It is not the Warden versus the players. There is a real, I'll call it a, a real toxic attitude towards dungeon mastering and players and a conflict between the two. And I really dislike that. I find it really challenging at the table when I'm running a game and, and someone has that idea that, that I'm there to be their, you know, their antagonist. I'm there to be the enemy. I'm there. I'm the controller of the world. I really dislike that and I love that this game has it built in. Has the opposite of that built in. Player choice. Players should always understand the reasons behind the choices they've made and information about potential risks should be provided freely and frequently. Principles. When the warden and players each have guidelines that help foster a specific play experience defined by critical thinking, exploration and emergent narrative shared objectives players trust one another to engage in a shared setting character goals and party challenges therefore the party is typically working together towards a common goal as a team i think that's a really good and important thing to include there i as a part of the after school club that i run i have to use um no friendly fire because you know Young teens who have never played tabletop games have grown up in a world of, of online video games where friendly fire is a thing. And it's something that I have had to 
adopt because they can get quite boisterous and want to take each other out. And I try to instill at those tables that this game, these games work best when you're working together, except if you're playing a different sort of game altogether, obviously. Um, all right. So the principles, I'm not going to go through all of these because uh, there's a lot, but there are principles for wardens and principles for players. And I really love that this is at the start of the game before the rules, before the character creation. It's right there at the start to let you know what the, as a warden or as a player, what sort of things you should be focusing your attention on while playing. So uh, information, it should be useful. Players don't need to roll dice to learn about their circumstances. This is a really inf interesting one. There are when I used to run adventurers leagues sessions, there would be so many instances where information was trapped behind a dice roll that and everyone was rolling terribly. Um, really simple stuff too, and obviously I would just work around that and give them the information. But it always felt It felt like I was giving up on the adventure and just giving them the inv information that they were failing to roll for instead of it just being a part of what they discover. And this builds into the game the idea that here are things that you know, you, you, are, you can see this and find this reasonably. Um, difficulty, danger, choice. Choice is really important. Having that choice and option, making sure players have options with what they're doing. Preparation. The game world is organic, malleable and random. It intuits and makes sharp turns. Use random tables and generators to develop situations, not stories or plots. NPCs remember what PCs say and do and how they affect the world. NPCs don't want to die and fuse their own self-interest and will to live into every personality. The NPCs are not blank canvases that the players can do what they like to. There will be consequences. The preparation is minimal and using dice rolls to come up with those things and, and discover those together is another thing that I love. This game really helped me open up to the idea of asking the players what they want to do uh, with a narrative focus. So emergent experience of players, what matters, not math or character abilities. Give the players weapon trainers and personal quests to facilitate improvement and specialization. Pay attention to the needs and wants of players and put realistic opportunities in their path. A dagger to your throat will kill you, regardless of your experience, armor, and impressive training. A story takes hold over a, a dice roll. I use, I, that's another thing that came up a lot when we played uh, fifth edition at the, at the school club, is that a player would have a clear advantage over their enemy, but they didn't roll very well, and so they did very little damage. Treasure tells a story. Treasure is valuable. Relics are not treasure, though they are useful. Relics are um, magic items, I believe. Use treasure as a lure to exotic locations under the, protect, the protection of intimidating foes. Uh, die of fate. A closure. Occasionally you will want an element of random, randomness. You can roll for that. In situations, roll a d6. Four or more generally favors the players. This is a luck roll. I've got a blog post about luck rolls. I love the luck rolls. I think they're really good. All right. Principles for players. Agency. Attributes and related saves do not define the character. Don't only ask what your character would do, but ask what you would do too. I l really like that this is blending that a bit. It's not just the character. Oh, my character would do this. It's why there's no intelligence stat in this. It relies more on player ability as well as character ability. Teamwork, work together. Exploration, ask questions, listen for detail. Take the warden's description without suspicion and don't shy, shy away from seeking more information. So not only is it built into the warden, but it, it is also identifying that some players can be suspicious. And that's a thing I've experienced too, that the, the players would think that I'm giving them false information, which is really a, a challenging thing to do because players make decisions based on this idea that perhaps I'm not presenting to them what the world is, really is. Uh, talking, treat NPC, NPCs as if they're real people. Another thing that's come up in the school club a lot, caution, fighting is a choice and rarely wise, a rarely wise one. So in this game, you don't roll to hit, you just roll for damage. So combat 
can be really, 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 really harsh. Okay, it can be, it, you can have a combat that lasts very quickly and everyone dies. Planning, think of ways to avoid obstacles. So this is another thing that we'll talk about some of the, the advantages you can get in combat um, and setting up an ambush is far more beneficial in this game because you can quickly finish your combat as opposed to letting it sprawl out and drag on and they don't often drag on. And that's also got here, you know, set goals, but don't expect anything. Don't expect treasure at the end of the thing. Use your, uh, earn your reputation. Keep things moving forward. Play to see what happens. Play to see what happens. I really love that phrase because it's, it's not about play to get gold. It's not about play to get magic items. It's play to see what happens. It's about telling a story. And the fact that these two things are at the start of the game really sits well with me. All right, character creation. Um, this game has a heap of randomness and I love it. You can roll completely random and it only takes, you could probably roll up a character in five to 10 minutes. There's also a Foundry VTT module for this which has, I think it's free, and, I'm, and I know this game is free, you can get this the digital version of this game for free too. Um, and I'm pretty sure the Foundry one is free as well, and that just how you can just click a button, new character's created, it's awesome. Uh, so, your ability scores, strength, dexterity, willpower, roll 3d6 for each character ability, you may then swap two of the results. So you can move that around a bit if you want, depending on what sort of character you wanna play. But you might do that later, because as you roll for random stuff, you get a, a random character. Uh, this game uses hit protection as opposed to hit points. Uh, it's like your ability to sustain damage before it starts really hurting you. And then once you've run out of hit points, you start chewing into your um, your strength. And once your strength gets to zero, you are dead. Inventory, a backpack with six slots, one slot for each hand and two slots for the upper body, such as a belt or chest. The bag can also act as an emergency sleeping bag. Items take up one spot, boltier items made it take up two, typically a two-handed or awkward to carry. Starting gear, all start with three days work rations, which is one slot, a torch, one slot, and three D6 gold pieces. Roll once for each of the starting gear on page seven, roll on the spell books table eight with a D100. Uh, all right, so let's have a look at this. There's names, whole heap of names. You can just roll D20s to come up with a random name or make your own. Character traits, this is description stuff. This has been really, really cool with new players who don't have, who have never played an RPG. This helps them build a character. And, and you know, there's always the, if you don't like your role, change it to the one that fits the best. Uh, starting gear. So rolling here to get armor, helmets, weapons, expeditionary gear, tools and trinkets. And then you also get a bonus item, which might be another one of those above. Okay, including a spell. So spells are rare and they work in a very particular way. I'll get to those in a minute. Spell books. Now these are just one no name things here. There is a, another couple of pages that explain these in more detail. But when I say more detail, it's, I think it's literally one sentence for each spell. So you get a lot of freedom with how those spells, with how those spells are used in play. And then there's just all that equipment list and money. You start with money. So if you want to buy some stuff, you can too. And then there's gear packages. So if you wanted to, if there was a particular type of character you wanted to play, you could have a look here and, and just pick these instead of rolling, which is another thing I like. It's a thing that I've done with a new group of kids. Instead of spending the time rolling, they just rolled their stats and then they picked a gear package, printed this out and chopped it up. All right, so the rules. Uh, this game uses saves. And I think that's a, a good indication of what sort of game this is you don't do skill checks or things as such but a save is done to avoid bad outcomes or risky choices so strength saves physical power lifting things bending things dexterity for poise speed reflexes and willpower to persuade deceive interrogate intimidate charm provoke manipulate spells essentially it is a roll under equal to or under the ability score, they pass, okay? So whatever your ability score is, you need you need to roll under that. And that connects to advancements. You can increase those things as you go, making it easier to roll under. So a one is always a success and a 20 is always a failure. Uh, healing, resting for a few moments, having a drink of water restores HP. However, if you wanna get your strength back, you need to 
have like a proper night's rest, day's rest even. Fatigue, PC deprived of crucial needs, is unable to recover hit points or ability scores. So if you are hungry or thirsty, you can't get that back. Anyone for more than a day adds fatigue to their inventory. Fatigue is pretty interesting. So you've got your 12 item slots, okay? And fatigue goes into your item slots, okay? It goes into your inventory. So that, like if you're, you just can't carry stuff. But that also connects closely with casting spells, which I'll talk about in a minute. Wealth and treasure, you got heaps of That's pretty standard stuff. Hirelings, create a hireling, roll 3d6 for each ability score, then give them 1d6 HP and a simple weapon. And you can flesh them out more if you want. They cost between one and three per day. Or share whatever treasure the party obtains. So if you're playing solo, you can make a... Or you're playing with a small group, you can get some hirelings. So, spell books. They contain a sp single spell and take up one slot. They cannot be transcribed or created. Instead, they are recovered from places like tombs and dungeons. It's like this lost language that needs to be discovered again. They will... Let <laughs> I love this. So, spell books sometimes display unusual properties or limitations, such as producing a foul or unearthly spell when opened, possessing an innate intelligence, or being legible only when held in moonlight so the 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 spell books are they're magic they don't just can they don't just have a magic spell in them they're a magic item uh scrolls are similar to spells however uh they do not take up an inventory slot they do not cause fatigue and they disappear after one use so you can find scrolls and cast them and they don't impact you uh this is one thing that i love about this because it bakes in some character and roleplay stuff. Spell books will attract the attention of those who seek the arcane power within, and it is considered dangerous to display them openly. However, in order to cast a spell, you have to hold the spell book in both hands and read its contents aloud. And then you add a fat fatigue to your inventory, and it occupies one slot. So the more you can cast as many, you can cast that spell as many times as you want, so long as you've got space in your inventory. Given time and safety, PCs can expand it so they can spend that time. If the PC is deprived or in danger, the warden may re re require a PC to make a will save to avoid any ill effects from casting the spell. So if you haven't eaten anything and you're trying to cast, like if you're, you know, you've been adventuring or wandering through a forest for days and you've run out of water and food and you try and cast a spell, that might be really, really difficult. Uh, relics are items imbued with magical spell or power. There's a few examples. A honey clasp has three charges. They're just your magic items, okay? They're not treasure, as it says in the front. Combat is pretty straightforward. Works in rounds of 10 seconds. Actions, you can move 40 feet and take one action, which is casting a spell, attacking, or making a second move, or some other reasonable thing. Push open a door, knock someone down, those sorts of things. They'll require saves if you need to. So the way it works is that the warden says what the NPC is going to do, and then the players do a deck save to see if they go before their opponents. Attacking, there's no attack roll, it's just a damage roll. You can do 1d4 damage unarmed. If there's multiple attackers, like say you're all attacking one thing, everybody rolls their damage and you just take the highest damage out of all of that. So if you've got someone with you know, a d12 then that's, and that holds, rolls the highest, you take that one. Uh, modifications, if attack is impaired, it must roll a d6 regardless of the damage die used on the weapon. And if you've got advantage, you roll a d12. So that's where you set up, setting up ambushes are excellent. Okay, and that's a discussion you have at the table. Like, are you at a disadvantage here because you're in a pit? Yeah, probably. So you're only going to be able to do d4s. Uh, then there's critical damage. Uh, so once a character's HP is reduced to zero or further, they start, the, the remaining comes off of their strength. Okay, they must make a strength save to avoid critical damage. So every time you get hit without hit points, you do a strength save and, and avoid critical damage. A PC that suffers critical damage cannot do anything but crawl weakly, gasping for life. If given aid and rest, they will stabilize. If left untreated, they will die within the hour. Now, this is an interesting thing. There's scars here on the next table. And when you get to zero HP, you get a scar. Little things like hamstrung, you can barely move until you get serious help. After recovery, roll 3d6. If the total is higher than your dex, take the new result. So you can, some of these, these scars turn out to be a good thing. A lasting scar, roll 1d6. It says where it is. 
If it is higher than, higher than your max HP, take the new result. So the scars aren't necessarily a bad thing. It's about when they get to zero HP. Exactly zero HP. Uh, and then we have a best bestiary. They're just little tiny things. 4 HP, 8 strength, 12. They've got a spear that does D6. And then it gives you three little dot points. So a root goblin, avoid combat unless they have the advantage, such as greater numbers. Guard their stolen goods to the death. Prize spell books. So they trying to get spell books, and they're also willing to trade if you have when you have a positive encounter with them. Uh, there's a few of those there. There is also a like a proper best area that's just recently been released that you can pick up that has like hundreds of monsters in it and the foundry vtt module which is free has all that stuff in there uh, it also comes with a creating monsters thing okay which i think is really good it makes it pretty straightforward you know use flavor and style to help them stand out players will remember a pig-faced humanoid looking for his missing sheep more easily than a generic goblet archer all right so those little things giving those NPCs there a little twist makes them more interesting and I, I love that here so here are the spells so d100 spells you roll on here usually to find out what you're getting and it just gives a a simple explanation an object obeys your commands as best it can okay so this is a lot open to interpretation there and it probably has a little bit to do with how well you roll uh, when trying to do that you create an illusionary sound that seems to come from any direction of your choice. Phobia. A nearby creature becomes terrified of an object of your choice. I think that's funny. X-ray vision. You can see through walls, dirt, clothing. Telekinesis. You may mentally move an item up to uh, under 60 pounds. And here's the character sheet. Have a look at it. It is absolutely excellent. I love it. It's such a good little design. It's really straightforward few notes there that you can just tick if you're deprived or not there's a little fatigue there so you can mark off where your fatigue is as, if, as you're casting spells if you're a talented drawer you can do your little drawing there or just a smiley face like I usually have because I am not talented in that way and then there's a su rule summary so for players you can give them that and the principles and then roll off the tables to get started that's my little read through of Yokar Gals can. Great game, inspired by Into the Odd and Nave. If you are looking for an alternative to rules heavy fantasy RPGs, can is your is a is a very good option. Okay. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this, please uh, check out my website. I make games, I make podcasts sometimes, um, I write adventures, and you can support me on Patreon as well where I do where you can vote on which things I do a read through of. You can be involved in monthly games. You can be a part of the play testing of games that I'm working on, like Bibliotex, which is a game I'm working on at the moment. So thank you for watching. Cheers. Um, make sure you like and subscribe too. Cheers.